Hi, this is Next Steps with Seesaw. So today, in a nutshell, you're gonna, we're going to talk about organizing Seesaw, collecting student work and giving feedback and what that could look like for you. Then we're going to take a look at some noteworthy class settings, and we're going to end with how to implement the blog uh, option in Seesaw. Hopefully, you will learn um, something that you can take back to your classroom and your campus. So let's begin. So over the last few weeks, we've kind of looked at organization with Seesaw, and then we know that it is a struggle. But we here are a few things that um, teachers have been trying and have been successful at. So the first thing is emojis for different subjects. So if you see to the right hand side, you'll see that there are books. And so these are two station activities um, using word wall words and high frequency words. And the student knows that this is an ELA activity because there's a book there. Another option for emojis could be different hearts or different symbols with different colors. So for this, I know that one of the activities is an ELA response and one of them is a social studies. Another idea could be to schedule activities on demand. So schedule them in real time. So what that means is if you're working with a with a, a class with your class, you could say, you know what, you're about to do an asynchronous activity. I'm about to schedule it in seesaw, seesaw and it's going to come up into your journal um, at the very uh, top. This will allow students to quickly see what they're needing to learn. All right, the next thing is to utilize the student link. Within an activity, if you look at the activity on your journal or on the activity tab, you can see that if you click on the three dots, it says get student link. So the middle uh, image is an example of where you would find that. Okay, so get student link is a great way for you to be able to hyperlink um, your activities in one spot. And uh, at the end, you'll see an example of that in action. The last idea for organization could be to archive your activities within the, few, the next few days. So what that means is if you assigned an activity and the students completed the activity, you gave feedback in the comment or edit activity, then after a few days you could archive that so that you still have all that information but that it goes away on the student journal. So let's, that takes us to how to collect student work and give feedback. There are lots of possibilities, so make sure that you think about what could work best for you and then to relay that message to the students. So make your plan and then let them know, this is what we're going to do for giving feedback, okay? So the first thing is to approve uh, during uh, post approvals. You can choose to select approve send back or delete so at, before it even shows up in the journal you have that option to give immediate feedback if you send something back you can actually comment first and comment why you're sending it back and then send it back to the the student to rework and then send back to you another possibility could be using the comments so once you've approved the post you can type or you can voice comments to the student. I would definitely think also about where you're going to put your grades at. So um, if, you, if you're choosing to turn off comments, then putting your grades uh, in a type response after you've made a voice response to your student with um, feed forward and with effective specific feedback that's gonna help move that student forward in their learning, then um, you could do grades underneath that. So think about a plan that's going to work for you. The next uh, uh, possibility for giving feedback is to edit the activity. So if you click on the student work, you can click on um, the three dots and edit activity. And what that allows you to do, as long as you're not using a voice, so if the student has not voice responded, you can um, click to uh, to write directly on their activity. So you can circle and highlight things that the student uh, needs to look for, some look for. So make sure also that if you're doing multiple windows, 
it does seem to um, have issues with Google Meets. So uh, sometimes it's, it's better for students to get off of the Meet to work through their Seesaw activities, and if they need help, they could always get back onto their Meet. But this will help with some uh, troubleshooting issues you may have. Some noteworthy class settings. These are all found under the wrench on the top right hand side. The first one is students can see each other's work. If you toggle that off, then it allows for you to be able to comment um, on each other's work and no one else to see it. If you have that on, then it's a great communication tool for students, but then it allows you to not be able to um, do as much specific feedback as you might want to do. And if you have it toggled off, enabling the blog for student communication may be important. The next thing is new items require approval. So if you have new items and you've turned it off where they can't see each other's work, it might be important if you don't want to use that feature of the send back feature um, to just have it off so you, you don't have to keep um, approving all of the items before students see it in their journal. The last one is to enable the student sample, or the sample student. And this is um, a feature that's automatically turned on, so it's good to just keep it on because it allows you to get the student perspective of any activities that you may assign. So if you want to try it out as a student and you want to be able to see how the links or the different activities um, uh, look, um, or if you want to be on a Google Meet and you want to use a student to show them exactly what they're doing, it's great to use the sample student. So that goes. Um, that takes us to the implementing the, C, the Seesaw blog. So for um, communication within your classroom, you can utilize the blog to, to have that and still have the comments off so that you can have feedback and grading purposes, but then they also can um, have communication with others, with their peers. So how you begin, it's in class settings, you enable the blog, and then there you can set up your public blog and you can um, even password enable it so that only people that know the password can get on and so they're in a safer environment. So why is the blog important? Well, the blog sets a purpose for you and it sets a purpose for the student, okay? So set your purpose and then it's important to keep going back to that purpose. The next thing is to create an audience. So think about how can I take and make my audience where it's beyond um, this uh, virtual meet or beyond my classroom. And so um, creating an audience allows for them to know that it, if I'm going to create something that I'm proud of, that other people are going to be able to see it. And so it also, I just said about communication. So showing off and sharing uh, their best work with others. And then it also allows for student voice. So it lets them start having student ownership, saying that I want to share this because I'm proud of what I've created. Here's some example of multi-link activities. Um, each one of these uh, links, they'll take you to different examples of how to take one image and put it into Google Drawings or Google Slide and how to make um, links with objects so that you can have multiple links in one place for the student. And then to create one activity with just that one linked slide or Google Drawing. And so these are uh, um, ideas and these are examples for you. So I hope that you enjoyed uh, learning more about Seesaw and getting an in-depth look about how you can organize, how you can um, provide feedback, and then communication with, with your students and how that can really help boost your, um, uh, your classroom engagement. So next week, we're going to be doing some more PL and 30, and this is the schedule every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We look forward to seeing you with um, the Google Meet code and follow MISD iTech on all social media platforms. If you would like this slide deck, please go to bit.do bit uh, forward slash M-E-S-Q learn seesaw and that will take you to this slide deck. Thanks for listening.